I've collected all my regions of interest using a variety of different methods in terms of polygons, the grow tool, rectangles, etc. And I'm reasonably happy with the representation of, of features that I have there. As you can see in the, uh, in the ROI tool window, I've got all my features down, down the left hand side and the number of pixels that have been included in each of those ROIs. Now what's important is to have a look both qualitatively and quantitatively at the differences between my ROIs and we start to have a look at the statistics to see how good the ROIs are in terms of when we want to make our classification, how representative, representative they're going to be. So first of all what I want to do is go to select all and then to click on the stats button and as I do that I'll then pull up a statistics report here. And so first of all we can have a look at the spectral, spectral profiles of our, of our regions of interest. Okay, So these are just initially the, the mean profiles, so the mean reflectance values in each of those bands. And remember all you need to do to see the legend for those, those profiles there is to right click and go to plot key. Okay, it's, not the, it's not the neatest plot tool I guess but it provides us with what we need here. So what we're looking at for looking at when we're looking at the spectral profiles, we're looking to see what bands are is are the spectral profiles most separable. Okay, so we have a look across across the different wavelengths or different band numbers, and what we're looking at is where are where are the biggest gaps between the different features. So for example, if I'm looking at bands five and seven. In band 5, for example, you can see that every single one of those features has a different reflectance value. If I look in band 7, we've got definite variability between, say, water, uh, mangroves is our green line, um, but around this area here for woody vegetation, non-woody vegetation, and, um, and a burnt area, there might be some overlap in band 7, and definitely between these three features of uh, bare ground, sand and urban areas all look very similar in band 7. So we can see that band 5 is actually quite good at pulling apart those different features. If we look at the other bands we can see also say around about band 4 we can see good separability between the water, the burnt areas and the other group of features but between those features it's actually quite difficult to see. In in band 1 for example that's also it's getting harder and harder and in band 1, 2, 3 and probably even 4 these features of urban and, and sand look almost identical so it's really only band 5 that's going to allow us to tell the difference between urban, urban areas and sand based on the statistics that we've got in this image. So that's how we look at these different profiles. You can export the profiles to have a look more quantitatively in, in Excel or some other spreadsheet if you like. Now also what we can have a look at is the, the individual histograms of those, of those different ROIs. So if we went to clear plot for example and select plot histograms for all region of interest in band 1 to start with. Okay, so you can see that the histograms for each of those features is pr they're all pretty close to each other. Okay, so then you might see some separability between uh, between the red class, which was our bare ground, and maybe our burnt area, but otherwise it's quite difficult. If we clear that, look at select um, histogram for say band five, where we've already identified that we could see a bit of difference between the in the spectral profiles you start to see well this the, the blue class which is our water definitely looks very different to our, our burnt area which is the red we do have some overlap between the the bright green which is our mangrove and the the burnt area so you can see that there's some overlap in band 5 but some features are distinguished quite well so after looking at these, I might actually go in and reevaluate re my regions of interest, perhaps draw a few more, delete a couple, and see if I can make these a little bit more separable. 
if I was, for example, quite happy with the ROIs that I've selected, I've decided that, yes, they are separable enough in all the bands that I need them to be, then I might also go and have a look at another tool called the ND Visualizer. So I can go up to File and export the regions of interest to ND Visualizer. It asks me what file this is going to relate to, which is my original dark pixel subtraction image, and I want to look at all my classes all together. Okay, so let's have a look at what this is doing now. So we've got two windows. First of all, our ND Visualizer window, which comes up black to start with, and our controls. So first of all, this is just letting us know we've got six bands to choose from. So one, two, three, four, five, and this would actually be band seven, but we've got six layers, so it just numbers them accordingly. So let's say we'd like to compare band one and two to start with. It's therefore assuming that on the x-axis, this is our band one, and we're plotting the reflectance values in each of the ROIs as coloured in so band one on the x and band y on the on the sorry band two on the y axis there and you can see that bands one and two are really highly correlated so it's actually quite difficult to to see the difference between those features okay you can perhaps tell the difference between between the urban which is that cyan color and water and you can also understand a little bit about what's it what's happening so you know you know that water has a very low reflectance value in band 1 and 2, so you'll see it appearing down this bottom area here, whereas urban areas are quite bright in bands 1 and 2. But the benefit of the ND visualizer is not only using just the two axes, you can actually add in a third or as many as you like. So let's put in band 5 there. And if you, if you now click on, we'll reduce this speed to probably down to about 20 or so to start with. And if we click start, you'll see this rotate. So this is actually looking at more than more than one axis, so it doesn't need to stay static. We can go to um, options and we'll have a look at show axes there, and it's showing you exactly where those axes are that it's rotating around. Okay, you can stop that and step it through each each rotation there if you just want to have a look at a little bit more. Okay, so the idea is that you, you'd like to see your cloud of pixels, which is what each of these dots represent in terms of the reflectance value. You want to see the cloud of pixels really tight, which is how they look for water, for example, and not overlapping. So you can see that our water class is really, really well distinguished compared to the other classes. And we would actually expect that because it is it is it has such highly different reflective properties compared to our different features. So this is just another tool that we can use and experiment with to have a look at the degree of overlap between our ROIs, which will give us an indication of how good our final classification is going to be at the end.